Hello friends, I am Dr. Sachidanand Singh and I am a faculty of biotechnology. So, in my previous lectures, we have understood about protein structure prediction and analysis in which we have covered few more topics like protein modeling, homology modeling, ab initio, threading and we also saw few specific softwares like Geno 3D, what if and other methods. Now, let us see what is the pipeline of protein structure prediction method. We should understand the different pipeline and what are the step by step protein structure prediction method. So, let us go ahead with that. This will give us the basic understanding and the all criteria present in pipeline to develop the pipeline for protein structure prediction method. Protein structure prediction method pipeline also enables bioinformatician and computer science people to take step by step approach to develop their own programming coding to understand and to develop their methods. So, let us start with that protein structure prediction is a crucial area in bioinformatics and computational biology aiming to determine the three dimensional 3D structure of proteins based on their amino acid sequences. Various methods and tools have been developed to predict protein structures and these methods can be organized into a structured pipeline. So, in this lecture we will be understanding about what are the different pipelines for protein structure prediction. So, let us see the overall outline of a typical pipeline for a protein structure prediction method highlighting the key steps and methodologies involved. So, the first is sequence retrieval and pre-processing. So, for sequence retrieval and pre-processing, the first component is input. The pipeline begins with the retrieval of the amino acid sequence of the target protein. This sequence can be obtained from publicly, publicly available data like Uniprot. So, in Uniprot, we can type in Uniprot and we can get the sequence of our interest. Second is pre-processing. Sequence needs to be pre-processed and may involve removing non-standard residues, dealing with missing data or handling post-translational modifications. So, that is known as pre-processing of the sequence. The second is homology modeling, which is known as template based method. In this, the methodology includes in cases where there are structurally similar proteins known as homologs with known 3D structures, homology modeling is also known as comparative modeling will be employed. Second in homology modeling is template selection. A suitable homologous protein with a known structure is chosen as a template sequence alignment third one is is chosen as a template third is sequence alignment the target protein sequence is aligned with the template sequence to identify corresponding residues in that homology modeling the second second concept is model building the 3d model of target protein is constructed by copying the coordinates of the template and adjusting them according to the sequence alignment. In that model development, model refinement is the next step. The model may undergo refinement to improve geometry and energy optimization. In model building, the second method on the pipeline may be ab initio modeling, which is known as template free method modeling. The methodology included in ab initio is in cases where no suitable templates are available, ab initio modeling which is also known as de novo modeling is used. It uses energy based approaches. The methods predict structures by minimizing energy functions often using molecular dynamic simulation or optimization algorithm. For example, sham in that fragment assembly is one step. Some methods uses fragment based approaches where short peptide fragments are assembled into a complete structure. In that hybrid method is another method. Hybrid method may include homology ab initial threading as a together or a combination method. 
So, what, it, what is the methodology behind that is hybrid method combines both template based and template free approaches to improve accuracy. Template based modeling can provide initial structures while lab initio methods can refine and complete the structure. Hybridization strategies. So, let us see what is hybridization strategy. Methods may employ different strategies for hybridization such as incorporating template fragments into ab initio model or using or using ab initio methods to refine template based model. In that structure refinement may be the last step. In this the methodology used is regardless of the modeling approach the generated structure may undergo further refinement to improve its quality. This includes optimization of side chain conformation and energy minimization. The algorithm used behind it is force fields. Molecular mechanics force fields are often used to calculate energies and optimize structures. In this quality assessment is one parameter. For quality assessment the methodology include is after a structure prediction and refinement the quality of the model is assessed. How the quality of model is assessed by Ramachandran plot. A Ramachandran plot is used to assess the backbone dihedral angles. What are dihedral angles? Phi and psi of amino acids in the model. For understanding this mol probability and procheck may be utilized. Software tools like mol probability and procheck can evaluate various aspects of model quality including bond length, bond angles and steric clashes. To validate all this validation approach has to be conferred. The methodology behind validation includes validation involves comparing the predicted model with experimental data if available. This can also include x-ray crystallography or cryo electron microscopy data. The statistical methods to understand is root mean square deviation RMSD. RMSD analysis quantifies the structural similarity between the predicted model and experimental structure. Global and local met quality matrices, various quality scores such as GDT, TS global distance test total score, TM score, Q score are also used for validation. For understanding the visualization and analysis under the pipeline of protein modeling, the methodology used may be visualization tools like PyMol, Chimera or VMD are used to visualize and analyze the predicted protein structures. Finally, in the all the pipeline, why we are doing this whole pipeline is to predict the protein structure and finally, why we are doing the protein structure prediction is to understand the functional annotation. So, to understand the functional annotations, researchers may annotate the function of the predicted protein based on its structural features such as active sites of a protein which is also known as binding pockets. So, this is a phase wise pipeline application in a broader way how a protein modeling can be done. So, let us see what are the further applications of protein modeling pipeline. So, further application will include methodology such as depending on the research goals the predicted protein structure can be used for various applications such as drug discovery, protein protein interaction studies or understanding the role of the protein in biological process. It can also help in reporting and publication. If the results are scientifically significant, they can be documented in research papers or reports and shared with the scientific community as a significant output. So, to, to explain it overall, in conclusion of the broader way of explaining the pipeline of the protein structure prediction method is a systemic and well defined process that involves sequence retrieval, modeling, refinement, yes, quality assessment, validation, 
visualization and further application. The choice of methods and tool of each step depends on the availability of templates. Second, computational resources, very important that what type of computer or server do we have and the very, very important aspect as a scientist or a researcher is research objectives. So, now let us see what are the advances in computational techniques, machine learning and structural biology which continues to improve the accuracy and efficiency of the protein structure prediction methods and the pipeline. So, to improve the accuracy and efficiency of protein structure prediction methods, making them invaluable tool is, un is by understanding the molecular basis of biological process and diseases. So, let us see how we study the three dimensional structure of protein and, and, and how it has been developed from the, the raw sequence taking help of experimental sequence and then taking into a 3D structure prediction using computational biology approach. So, we will analyze this whole approach. So, let us see that why we do and what are the understanding in a elaborative way. Studying the three dimensional 3D structure of a protein is a crucial to gaining insights into its functions, which is one of the driving principle behind structural biology and structural bioinformatics. Experimental techniques such as X-ray crystallography and NMR provides an accurate mean to determine the structure of a protein and cryo-electron microscopy and techniques have re achieved atomic resolution. The speed of these techniques however falls far behind that of sequencing technologies leaving a large gap between the known sequences of protein and their structures. In the absence of experimental data, in silico prediction of protein structures has become an important mean of studying proteins in spite of the sequence structure gap. So, to, to fix the pipeline of protein structure prediction, there are two broad approaches for achieving this. First, template based modeling which is known as yes, homology modeling and threading. Second one is template free modeling or which is known as ab initio techniques. In the presence of a suitable template, homology modeling provides an accurate way to determine the 3D structure of a protein with many successful applications. Homology modeling involves predicting the structure of a protein using homologous proteins with known structures as templates. This approach works due to the principle that the structure of a protein is far more conserved than its primary amino acid sequence. The most well established and widely used program for this is which we have already seen in previous lectures is Modeler. Modeler is a software by Sali Lab which can be downloaded and used locally for protein structure prediction. There are many users with little to no experience in structural bioinformatics who rather turn to one of many automated modeling servers. Examples of these include automated server, ModWeb, Swiss model and Fire2. ModWeb is a modeling server that forms part of a mod base. It is a fully automated server that performs modeling using Modeler. There are several options that can be selected that determine how templates are identified as well as what criteria the server will use to select a best scoring model. Swiss model is one of the most widely used and longest standing server which uses its own comparative modeling functions. The server can perform fully automated modeling but does not also allow users to select templates for modeling. The server also has functionality to model ligands into structure as well as to incorporate quaternary structure into modeling. If this is known from the template, Fire2 is an automated modeling server that is widely used and models with an accuracy comparable to other top modeling servers may also be utilized. The server provides two fully automated options, normal and intensive mode. 
which uses its sophisticated comparative modeling algorithms. Combined with other tools such as owing to perform ab initio modeling and 3D ligand site to predict ligand binding sites. While automated servers are useful, they do exclude users from the modeling process. This lack of engagement limits their understanding of what is happening in the background, making it difficult to critically evaluate their models, as well as make alterations and improvements. An example of a server which does not allow for this is the HHPRED homology detection server. This provides an interface that links its own template identification algorithm to model to generate a 3D structure for further analysis. The HHPRED server is one of the most flexible one by allowing users to select templates and modify their alignments. However, it does not allow users to modify modeling parameters such as number of models to be provided or refinement level, both of which can improve model quality. It also does not trim its alignment at the N and C termini to only include sections covered by the template. This causes modeler to attempt to model these regions without template information producing indistinct loops in this region. So, this was about the concept. Apart from mod homology modeling servers, some so homology modeling servers, some other techniques and servers have also been developed which work well especially on more challenging protein targets. That is those with non-homologous templates of known structure. The most successful of the server is I treasure, which also came as few competitive best possible results during the CAS uh, calculation and CAS winning. Probably I treasure, which incorporates a combination of threading, fragment assembly and ab initio technique as part of its template based modeling protocol. I treasure and many other software tools are also present as a together in Zang lab. While this server is, all, is also well suited to challenging targets, it is not ideal for more standard modeling jobs as it can be time consuming, often limited users to a single modeling run at a time spanning over a number of days, which, which makes the results long. Considering all the above points, it has been developed that protein interactive modeling primo protein interactive modeling primo pipeline to provide a user inclusive online modeling resource. So, for protein modeling also step by step is also known as a pipeline. So, considering eye tracer now primer pipeline can also be discussed. Primo incorporates a user friendly interface that has been designed to guide users through each stage in the homology modeling process. Keeping novice users in mind, the interface is simply and easy to learn while allowing more experienced users to alter parameters and exhibit control over their modeling jobs. Multiple options are provided for both template identification and template target sequence alignment. Additionally, Primo allows users to alter parameters specific to modeler, such as refinement level and number of models produced, as well as allowing users to model specific ligands and ions found within the template PDB files. Primo is being developed as part of H3A Bionet for use by H3 Africa consortium group. Research groups around Africa as part of the consortium have been sequencing a large number of human genomes linked to various diseases and identify disease associated novel SNPs. So, Primer was playing a very major role during this whole exercise. Primo can be used to analyze disease related proteins and relevant non-synonymous 
single nucleotide polymorphism known as yes SNPs. In this way PRIMO can help to advance the progress towards the consortium scientific goals. However, the usage of PRIMO goes beyond the consortium targets as it is designed to model proteins from any organism. Here we also would like to describe the features of PRIMO web interface and assess the backend screens of PRIMO to demonstrate the accuracy of the pipeline when choosing fully automated options of modeling protein target of interest. So, we by the uh, 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 image we can see how a PRIMO URL look likes and the web page which, in, which include this. So, the method involved behind PRIMO is the back end functionality of PRIMO is written in Python presented as three separate tools in a local version of the job management system. The PRIMO pipeline currently provides options which are HH suit we can see over there protein blast, cholesterol omega, MAFET, muscle, tea coffee, modeler and project. So, at one phase itself we are able to do basic local alignment search tool, multiple sequence alignment, protein modeling and validation of protein. The PRIMO web interface is written as a single page web application which is managed by Django web framework communication between PRIMO web interface and PRIMO tool is managed through Alex call, Ajax calls via GMS API, which is been represented in the figure in the slide. And it also illustrates the process that how job can be submitted into PRIMO and what are the steps we have to keep to start with. A user can submit a job over there and results can be retrieved. So, that was the input to be given in PRIMO. PRIMO interface their input parameters are sent to the PRIMO server. PRIMO then compiles these parameters into a request to be sent to GMS. So, this authentication can again be given for analyzing the result. Once the request has been compiled, it is sent to GMS which submits the job to the cluster and returns the job ID to the PRIMO web server. PRIMO then simply gives a message to the interface that job was submitted successfully. While GMS monitors the job on the cluster, in the cluster the whole job is been running and as per that the result is been given. When the job finishes running on the cluster GMS notifies PRIMO that results are available. PRIMO then collects the result and returns them to the interface where the user can interact with them. Now let us see PRIMO modeling algorithm and what algorithm is been taken care. The PRIMO modeling algorithm is also displayed in the figure and we can see the step wise. The minimum input required for the server is the sequence of the protein which is known as target protein which needs to be modeled. Thereafter the process is divided into three step. First is template identification, second and selection, second is target template sequence alignment and third is model modeling and model evaluation. Each step follows on to the next and allows for user in inspection and input between these stages. The whole thing has been explained in the flow chart which has been represented for depicting the modeling algorithm incorporated by PRIMO. The steps involved in modeling using PRIMO can be seen as a interactive process in which the user can supply and edit input as they see fit while PRIMO chains these steps together to model protein targets of interest. This includes template identification. This step involves helping the user find suitable template for modeling. PRIMO also allows users to select either HH search or HH suit or protein blast to search for templates. Blast is a set as a default search option and as it runs substantially faster than HH search method and identifies 
closely related templates. If any are present in the PDB, a local version of BLAST is also used to query the target sequence against National Center for Biotechnology Information, which is also known as NCBI, database of PDB files downloaded from the local server of NCPI that is FTP colon double dash FTP dot NCBI dot NLM dot NAI dot GOV slash blast dot database. Output from blast is passed to extract information about each template including the PDB ID and chain template target sequence identity query coverage and the alignment produced when running the blast. Alternatively, HH search can be run if distant homologs need to be identified. This option incorporates various programs from the HH suit package. HH bliss is also run to search the target sequence against the HH suits Uniprot 20 database. Secondary structure is added to the A3 alignment, an alignment format generated by HH bliss and used by HH search. Before converting it to hidden Markov model using HHMake, HH search is then used to search against the HH suits PDB 70 database to identify template. This results in HR file pass to extract the same. Information obtained from BLAST will also run. Now let us see target template sequence alignment. For each template selected, the PDB file is passed to extract its sequence. Both missing residue and non-standard amino acids are replaced with an X character. So, this information may be included in the alignment. Primo performs the alignment using MAFET, Muscle, Cluster Omega and T coffee. So, after this the model and model evaluation will be performed. For modeling and model evaluation, the which is the final step in modeling process involves using the target template sequence alignment and the template PDB files to generate the protein information resource file and modeling script. The alignment undergoes some pre-processing before being converted to PIR format. Primarily, this involves replacing the missing residue character with a gap character that is known as dash and modified residue with a period known as dot characters since this is how a modeler recognizes modified residues. The sequences also undergo trimming at each end of the each end to ensure that the part of the target sequence being modeled have a corresponding template section at each end. Finally, each template sequence is checked against the sequence extracted from its PDB file to ensure that it is correct. The starting and end residues in each template which is required by modeler is also determined and added to the PIR file. The PIR file that is protein information resource file is required by modeler to link the template target alignment to the specific segments of each template that is PDB file using used in modeling. Once the PIR file has been created, the modeling script is prepared. Then it runs using modeler. After modeling has completed, the models, the models are evaluated by yes, modeler normalized which we have seen DOP, DOP Z score as well as ProCheck. If ligands are specified for modeling, an additional set of steps is taken to prepare the PIR file before modeling can begin or in this context ligands include may uh, include may have he atom, he atom record found in the template PDB excluding non-standard amino acids. For example, substrates like ions, inhibitors and solvent molecules. All ligands specified are identified within their respective template PDB file. The position of the ligand that occurs last in the coordinate section is noted and becomes the ending residue for that template in the PIR file. All residues and ligands that occur up to this position are then appended to the template entry in the original PIR file. In the target sequence, gap characters are added to match the length of the template. Gaps are then replaced with period characters to match the positions of ligand molecules 
of interest that occur within the template since modeler recognizes this character as ligand as well. In addition to PIR file modification, additional parameters are also given to modeling script to instruct modeler to read in ligands or solvent molecules wherever applicable. So, now let us see the uh, uh, workflow of the scripts behind the Primo. So, in Primo backend scripts are overview of the steps followed when modeling known protein targets from the PDB and second is filtering steps involved to reach the final target. So, let us see the input page. In the input page, they will provide an overview of the modeling jobs. Users can simply enter in a target sequence and begin the modeling process. Primo utilizes modelers, so users must also supply modeler key. If no other input is provided, Primo will run using the default parameters set for each modeling stage. Alternatively, the page allows users to adjust the parameter for template identification, sequence alignment and modeling for template identification. Users can also choose search templates such as HH search or protein blast. So, now using the whole approach of Primo, let us see the accuracy of the Primo at the backend splits. While the Primo website was designed to promote users involvement during each step in the homology modeling process, the backend scripts are capable of performing fully automated modeling. Here we, in the uh, web server, we are presenting the accuracy of Primo when no user intervention occurs during the modeling process. To assess the tools and algorithms incorporated into Primo, an evaluation study will be performed by modeling proteins with known structures from the PDB and using the template ranging from 20 percent to 90 percent sequence identity as well as using five different alignment approaches. After modeling and filtering as explained in the method section or as explained during the all algorithmic steps, different model target proteins can be evaluated. The scaling of the model production, evaluation and performance can also be seen using modeler's DOPE Z score. When evaluating models by Z score, the desired value may be kept as near to minus 1.0 or below. So, usually we will see the GA351 value or DOPE score value less than minus 1 or below as these models may be construct considered as naive like. When testing with Primo scripts, the models F efficiency and average can also be understood with a threshold value. This is an expected structure understanding for sequence identity and generally have similar structures. The, the sequence similarity may also include uh, greater than 40 percent. The alignment based on programs that has structural information such as HH search, 3D coffee, outer performed and other alignment options can also be utilized. During this all result analysis, additional structural information may also be known to improve the alignment accuracy in case of low sequence identity. So, this was the whole process of Primo to be utilized. So, in conclusion, we can see that what are the different pipelines of protein structure prediction starting from input to output. And in this, we, in this lecture also, we have taken up the stepwise pipeline from input, what are the algorithms involved, what are the steps behind all the different methods and what are the output and results for this pipeline. Then in this also we selected one specific tool to understand the pipeline of that. In that the one specific tool we took was Primo. So, I hope this gave you a brief explanation about Primo. In the coming lecture, we will be understanding about structure validation and properties. Thank you.